And here's a sample of the norms list for air. Plane was the most, uh, plane, breathe, and balloon. These were the three most uh, common responses. And that's the number of times they were listed. Now, the list is much longer than this. It goes down to about 70, 80 uh, words which are listed twice. There's more than that, actually. There's a lot of words, but here they are. Any favourite ones here? What's my favourite one for air? Where is it? I thought airhead was there. It is somewhere, probably not. Number five. Number five, yes, it's, uh, there it is. Funny when you're looking at it, you don't find them. Airhead. Um, learners don't actually um, uh, provide this response very often. Well, hardly at all, actually. I don't think they know it. It's a nice one. Okay. So, uh, these were the cues that I came up with. And um, there were a couple of problems with lead was a, with this word a lot of, I missed it, a lot of learners uh, saw red. They suffered a reading miscue. And for this word, they'd write like magazine, book, newspaper. Oh dear. Church had a problem with the proper nouns. People would write names like Jesus, Mary. Uh, that was my mistake, but anyway, it happened. Uh, for this experiment, I had 111 Japanese learners of English. They were a really big range of levels from um, uh, highly proficient to very, very sort of false beginner level of English, all adults. Uh, and um, I used some countermeasures to check their vocabulary. Uh, there's an um, EVST, it's a yes-no test where you, it's a computerized test where you get a series of words appear on the screen and you just click yes or no if you know them. And that, um, there are some nonsense words too, and if you click that you know them, you lose a couple of points. But in 10 minutes it calculates the number of words you know. I also use the kanji translation test with words from different frequency bands. And uh, what happened? I had an awareness and attitude questionnaire as well. So these are the uh, descriptive linguistics mean scores. Um, I also, yeah, I had uh, native speakers, 37 native speakers, and uh, the learners, 111 of them. What does this data tell you? You've got the maximum score, 240, 240 there. So WATA is the number of responses. B is a stereotypy score, so you've got the mean for the whole group. Notice the highest score for the learner, 229, and the low is 16. That's a huge uh, variety. Uh, the highest level learners knew 8,400 words, lowest level 750. Oh dear, very low level. And um, so you notice that's a very high score, isn't it? For the learner, it's very close to the highest score for the natives. But uh, the, still, the, the non-native mean and the native mean, there's quite a lot of difference there. So I'll show this data again. I've got my native speakers here with a native mean, and the non-native speakers all along here. This is the number of response score there. Uh, the, the highest level well, the highest performers are quite similar to the natives there. With the uh, stereotypy score, this is by matching the responses with the norms list, uh, similar pattern, although there are some, some of the... This score here is remarkably high. This character spent a year in New Zealand, a uh, very, very powerful learner of English with a very high TOEIC score of 900 and... 50 or something, but uh, he's better than most of the native speakers. I don't know how he did that. Um, he just seemed to be, um, well, <laughs> where he was entering responses like steam coming from his computer. He was a very, very, very um, aggressive and energetic at the test. Um, so, let's have a look. Uh, I'll show you some examples of the res response sets for keep. This is a kind of low intermediate level learners' responses for keep time, money, on. I mark them in blue because these are on the list. 
Beauty Space Young. What do you think? Keep Young. It might be on the list. Keep, but it's not. That's too bad. Uh, six responses for Keep, and three of them are three points for Stereotypy. There's a, on this side, this is a, a higher level learner. This is not Hiroshi, the one who was the best, but anyway. It was uh, another returnee who'd spent a year aboard. He enters a full 12 responses. And uh, relationship, it's strange that that is on the norms list. Maintain is a synonym for keep, away, preserve, have. But I, distance, I thought that would be a good response. It's not on the norms list. That's a bit of a problem. Conserve is also a synonym for keep. He doesn't score a point for that. So I began to lose a bit of faith in my norms lists there. Anyway, uh, with the correlations were at this level for the their highest WAT with the translation test to the highest. Um, it doesn't mean that the test is a valid test. It just um, these Pearson correlations. They just tell you about the differences between the tests, basically. And uh, so what this score tells us is the stereotypy measure correlates more strongly with the proficiency measures. Therefore, the measuring responses with norms is worthwhile. It's worth doing. It tells you something about the learner lexicon. Uh, but the thing with correlations is they look quite strong quite high if you like, but uh, um, basically that's only because there's a very, very wide range of level. Don't be fooled by that. Uh, I put this on a scatter plot. This is the stereotypy scores and the translation test scores along here. Basically it shows that what appears to be there is a relationship between vocabulary knowledge and word association knowledge. There's a little chap who spent a year in New Zealand way up there again. He's a little bit out of, away from the field. There's a lot of variation in this. I wonder what it means. I feel that uh, learners who perform well on the word association test, they are kind of more fluent speakers, generally, I felt. But I wasn't able to confirm this with any test results. I also did a test retest study to see if it was a random thing or not. I had 39 of these subjects, not all of them, only 39 of them I did. They took the test again after two weeks to see if it was a random performance or not. And uh, there's quite a high correlation which suggests that it's not a random thing uh, as was suggested in the previous study. And I put this on a scatter plot. What you find generally happens is that uh, time two, the retest after two weeks, the most, um, most of these subjects perform slightly better. And I think that's called a practice effect. Because they've taken the test already before, uh, they've got some uh, test knowledge, some practice um, advantage, and therefore they score better the second time. But it's uh, fairly... You know, it's across the board, it's not, not, not a random thing at all. I was worried about these norms though, I, I pointed out this problem, I got these norms lists from native speakers, but some of my, my learner responses seemed really native-like, but were not on the norms list, and I investigated this problem. Uh, the keep again, the non-native responses, uh, these were the ones that I showed you before that marked in blue. They're on the norms list. The ones in black were not. Then I look at a native speaker who also took the test, and I find that, um, okay, the problem is, aha, conserve, you see. So, this non-native speaker does not get a point for conserve, but... A native speaker who takes the test does uh, put the same word, so uh, that's obviously not fair and there's something wrong. 
and there's more of these. Here's another conserve again. And uh, there was another one. Okay. So there were 223 of these new norm, new norm responses, like conserve that are not on the norms list. And 81 of them were found to have been provided by the non-native subjects in a total of 230 cases. I talked to some of these uh, subjects after taking the tests, and uh, there was one lady. These are, are her responses to gas. Oh, I'll tell you about Shino. Uh, Sh uh, Shino went to junior high school in Sapporo. Then she decided she did not want to go to senior high school anywhere in Japan. Um, and she decided she wanted to go to senior high school in an English-speaking country. So she blindfolded herself in front of a map of the world and took a pin and plunged a pin into the map and decided to study in the country nearest to the pin. And you know where she went to? New Zealand. <laughs> she went to Ireland. And uh, she spent two years there and, oh, she's still there actually. She came back on holiday and she'd been there for two years, 17 year old. Is her responses to gas, stink, smoky, coagulate, annoying, air, smoke, factory, oh dear. She only gets one point for air there. She didn't do very well on this. So the idea is that subjects do not always respond with the words they think of. For example, she said, my teacher taught me that when we heat propane, it coagulates. So that's why she put the response coagulate. Uh, but she, propane is on the norms list. She could have got a point for propane. She was thinking of propane. She didn't write it in. She also said, um, smoke and factory are connected in my mind. I said, why do you put factory? She said, ah, oh, it's after smoke. That's chaining. And that is a problem that um, can happen. And uh, if a subject starts to chain responses, then the chance of getting a, a point from the norms list is quite low. So anyway, uh, why is learner word association test performance related to L2 proficiency or vocabulary? Why would it be related? We found that there is a relationship. Here's some ideas. So compared with higher level learners, what lower level learners do is, in Japan, they tend to translate from L2 to L1 Japanese while they're producing the responses. And this slows down the response production rate. And uh, sometimes they think of a word in, in L1, in Japanese, but they can't think of the English word in L2. Uh, so what happens is, with gains in proficiency, learners may develop more efficient dynamic networks of associations which do not involve thinking in Japanese. So I've got some questionnaire items here to think about this. Uh, and I asked my students, write, um, if, if I knew more words, I'd be better at the activity, the word association activity. 